So this is definitely the most cost and time effective method to incorporate your small business in Canada online. Hey everyone, Griffin here. And if you're a small business owner in Canada with a growing business, one of the best ways to better manage your income and expenses along with paying less tax on your company's earnings is to incorporate the business rather than keeping things under your personal name as corporations are subject to better taxation rates and they provide your personal assets with limited liability protection, which can be beneficial as you're growing your customer base over time. Now, I've personally had several of my businesses set up as corporations over the years, so I absolutely have experience dealing with navigating the incorporation process for small businesses. And just the other day, I actually helped my girlfriend set up a corporation for her small business that's thriving and also starting to really take off. So this inspired me to make a video sharing this very process for entrepreneurs who may be new to setting up a company in Canada. So in today's video, I'll be taking you through the process of incorporating your Canadian business online in a matter of only a couple of minutes, let's do it. All right, quickly here, before I walk you through the online incorporation process, I wanna speak about why incorporating may be a good choice for you or not, along with a couple of other factors to consider. So first off, you need to understand that a corporation is a fully separate legal entity from yourself in the eyes of the law and the CRA, Canada Revenue Agency. So even if you're a one person business and you're going to own 100% of the corporation shares, you are not the corporation and vice vice versa. This means that the company has its own unique business number, which is sort of like a unique sin for individuals. It files separate taxes from yours. It's able to take on loans and mortgages. And from a legal standpoint, it's separate from your personal assets. Now, from a taxation standpoint, though, corporations tend to pay significantly less marginal tax on actively earned income than individuals do, which is the highest taxed form of income, right? Income that you're earning from your job, for example, is going to be the highest taxed form of income. In fact, here's a quick comparison to give you some perspective on the different taxations between individuals and corporations. So if you're an individual making, say, $250,000 a year in Ontario without any further deductions, first of all, you're doing quite well. However, you'd pay around $96,000 in income tax for the 2023 calendar year. On the other hand, though, if your corporation earns $250,000, a year, and that is you no know, net income, it would pay roughly 30,500 in income tax for the exact same fiscal period. That being said, you're still taxed at the personal level on salary or dividends that you are taking out of the company to pay for your own living expenses. But nonetheless, it offers you more control on when and how you utilize your after tax income. Do keep in mind that incorporating your business also comes with additional costs and administrative requirements though, such as annual reporting, maintaining corporate records, and potentially higher accounting fees as well. So it's important to weigh the benefits and drawbacks before deciding if incorporation is the right choice for your business at the given moment. Let's now take a look at the different steps that you need to take in order to incorporate your business online in Canada. All right, so to set up your corporation online, you're going to have to head over to this website right here. I'll leave a link to it down below in this video's description. Now, once you're on the page, you'll have to click on how to incorporate your business followed with uh, keep reading or incorporate now. So we're gonna click on incorporate now, and then you're gonna have to provide some more information essentially to identify yourself to the Canadian government. Uh, in this case, if you wanna take your time to read all this, you can. However, I'm going to click on continue to sign in, and you're gonna do so in one of two ways. Either if you already have a GC key uh, that you've signed into the government of Canada's website before, or you can use the sign in partner, which is gonna be the same type of thing as when you're logging in to say, my CRA or any other government website. Essentially, you're going to log in through a uh, financial partner like TD, BMO, or any of these other financial companies or institutions. So we're going to click on TD because that is the one that I use to sign in. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. All right. Now, by the way, once you do log into this website using the sign in partner, you're also going to have to verify your identity. So you can do that one of three ways, either mailing in 
a photo of your passport or driver's license, but much simpler is just to take a photo of your identification, either your passport or driver's license, as well as a selfie, and you will uh, then be able to identify uh, your identity so you can go ahead and uh, incorporate your business. So this is the page you'll be presented with, and you'll see right here the button incorporate with a $200 in bracket. So it does cost $200 to incorporate a business online. We're going to click on that right now to go through this process. So it's actually quite simple. It's going to present you with a couple different options, basic incorporation, custom incorporation, or not-for-profit incorporation. If you're watching this, chances are a not-for-profit will not apply here. We're going to be incorporating a business either under basic or custom. Essentially, the main difference between basic and custom though is that under a basic incorporation, you're going to be assigned a numbered name, right? So for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Canada Inc. versus with the custom incorporation, uh, we'll, we will give you the flexibility to tailor your articles of incorporation, allow you to choose a corporate word name. So for example, Griffin Hairdressing Incorporated, let's say, uh, as well as create a structure with multiple classes of shares. So again, if you're someone who's starting, say, a YouTube channel or any type of small business, an Amazon business, a Shopify business, using a basic incorporation is most likely what you're going to be looking for because not only are you going to get a simple numbered name, it's also going to allow you to choose between a predetermined share structure for one class of shares or two classes of shares. If you are, say, uh, the single shareholder of the company, chances are you're probably going to issue yourself a given number of shares, say 1 million, and be 100% share owner of all of those shares. So we're going to click on basic incorporation, click on next. Okay, now from here, it's going to bring you to step one of eight, and this is about your articles of incorporation. So when you incorporate, essentially, you are once again creating a separate legal entity. So you're going to be receiving things such as articles of incorporation that include business number and so forth. These are like your birth certificate for the company. So I'm gonna go read through this. Articles of incorporation are the legal document that govern the structure of your corporation. Uh, you've chosen basic incorporation, which means your corporation will be predetermined articles of incorporation. Predetermined meaning uh, it's going to spit you out well a pre-made article and you're not going to make anything custom. That is why this is more relevant for someone who has a very simply structured company, not someone who let's say has many stakeholders or it's a more complex business structure. Again, I would recommend going with a professional, either a notary or a lawyer if that is the case for you. Now in this case, numbered corporation name, your corporation gets an assigned number name, and the minimum and maximal, maximum number of directors, minimum one, maximum 10, and it is a private business. So we're gonna click on next here, and we will have to submit our contact information. So all of this is blurred out right now uh, because, well, this is my personal information. However, uh, this is going to reflect your own personal information. We'll go to the next page, class of shares. So here we can determine whether or not we want one class of shares or if we want two classes of shares. Again, if you're going to be the sole shareholder, chances are you might just want to go with one class of shares, which you can select right here. Now we can click on the little I information that's gonna give you more uh, information essentially. So if your corporation does not need different classes of shares, for example, you are the shareholder, the sole sh shareholder of the corporation, you may want to select this option. Your corporation shareholders will have the right to vote, receive dividends, receive the remaining property of the corporation after dissolution. So if you don't really know what whether or not you need one or two classes of shares, chances are you'll just need one class. Essentially by having more than one class, you can attribute different characteristics to those different classes of shares, such as voting rights, um, access to dividends at a different cadence or pace, depending on when earnings coming in. These are all things that you can uh, essentially modify and customize with more than one classes of shares. We're gonna click on one class of shares in this case though, just to make things simplistic. So we'll go to next. And this is where you're going to um, in input corporate information, such as the registered office address. So you need to have a office address for your corporation. And this is quite simple. If you are working from home and your company is based at home, you don't have an office, chances are this is just going to be your home address unless you have, say, an office somewhere else in your province or in another province. 
um, that is going to be uh, dependent on your current business. So we're gonna put in, I'm gonna just put in fake information here and I'm gonna blur it out. Uh, just so we can go to the next step. All right, from there, once that is input, the directors are going to show up here. So the directors of the company are essentially the people who have control of the company. They aren't necessarily the largest shareholders, but they're people who have access to the company are able to take decisions on behalf of the company. So in this case, um, there is there would be one shareholder and that would be me in this fictitious example. You can add more directors though by clicking right here and uh, uh, adding more directors essentially. All right, now I'm gonna click on cancel and we will continue going down from here. Incorporators, this is the person who will sign the corporation's articles of incorporation must be 18 years or older, not bankrupt, and not incapable. And then finally for this page, we're going to choose the date of incorporation, choose the effective date. So essentially it's like the birth of uh, your, your incorporation essentially. Uh, and usually that's going to be the day in which you're doing it. So in this case, we are September 9th. That's totally fine. We will click on next. All right, and finally the last step here before proceeding to determining whether or not your corporation is going to be registered at the provincial level or territorial or federal level essentially as well as proceeding to the payment is going to be reviewing printing and signing your uh, basic incorporation document so this includes the articles of incorporation that you can download for yourself here you will want to download that print it as well as sign it and keep it in uh, a safe place for your records as well as the initial registered office address and first board of directors document both of these are very important to just keep a nice copy of uh, I like keeping a physical copy in my my records. From here, you have to well, sign it and confirm that the incorporator, so that will be you in this case, um, has signed form one as well as form two. You will click on this and uh, go to next. Now, in this case, I'm not going to move forward with this uh, incorporation because of course, this is a fictitious company. I'm not looking to incorporate. However, you'll go to the next step, uh, which will be determining whether or not you want to incorporate at the provincial or federal level. Now, when it comes to determining whether or not you want to incorporate your business at the provincial or federal level, there are a couple things to take into account. The main ones though being the fact that for provincial incorporation, this means only conducting business in that province, whereas federal incorporation allows you to conduct business across the country. Additionally, provincial incorporation protects your business name in that province only, whereas federal incorporation protects your business name across Canada. There are a couple more characteristics though, so we'll look over a couple of these right now on the Canadian government's website, as we can see here. So so choosing between federal incorporation and provincial or territorial incorporation, there are several benefits to incorporating federally. federally. Heightened name protection, across Canada, as well as right to carry on business anywhere in Canada. So federally incorporated companies can carry on business anywhere in Canada, and there are no restrictions regarding the province or territory where the head office is located. So that's actually a good thing to mention. Even if you're uh, incorporated federally, you can have your offices located in any one of the provinces or territories. Whereas if you are uh, incorporating at the provincial level, your main business office needs to be located in that province or territory. Third point, recognition. So federal incorporation is often considered a sign of distinction. Companies incorporated federally receive global recognition as Canadian companies. And then finally, online services. Corporations Canada offers clients an online service that allows you to send documents, pay fees, all of this on the Canadian government's website. So personally, all the companies I've ever incorporated through this method, I've gone with the federal incorporation. Um, definitely do a bit more research into your own case. However, that is what you will most likely want to go with. And then finally, you will proceed to the payment. It is $200 to incorporate online. And keep in mind that every year above any other accounting fees for your business, you have to um, spend $12 for an annual filing. And finally, I thought it important to mention that incorporating your business can have many advantages as we've just covered, but it also comes with added and ongoing responsibility, especially if you're the sole shareholder who's going to be taking care of all of the filing and providing financial documentation to your accountant. So first off, it's absolutely essential that you keep your company's financial and incorporation documents in a dedicated binder to keep track of them separate from any personal documentation 
Union because again, your company is a separate legal entity from yourself. Additionally, incorporating online as we've just covered is hands down the cheapest and quickest way to go about setting up a corporation. But unless you're a tax or legal professional who really knows what you're doing, this method is best for simply structured businesses with few shareholders and a simpler business rather than more complex structures with several stakeholders and things to take into account at the time of incorporation, which can impact the company down the line. For example, while I've incorporated my own social media and e-commerce businesses myself with the method that we've just covered, well, for my real estate businesses that involve multiple properties and other shareholders, we felt it best to just get this done by a professional that we can reference down the line and count on for further guidance. But this did, of course, come at a much higher fee than simply filing it yourself and paying the $200 to the government. So that's how to set up your corporation online in Canada. If you have any questions about the process, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll try to answer as best as I can. Good luck. Also, as always, I have links down in this video's description to resources that I use and recommend where you can get some free money for signing up to an account uh, such as Wealthsimple, Quest Trade, as well as some courses I have about real estate investing, stock market investing, and so forth.